Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Yesterday I talked about books that were appropriate for preschool through the first grade, and today I want to talk about fun and amazing and incredible books that you can read your, to your children through second grade through the fifth grade. By the time they're in second grade, and sometimes even before, oftentimes if you're reading to your children every day, by the time they're in kindergarten or first grade, you can start mixing in chapter books. But definitely by the time they're in second grade, they're ready for some pretty serious chapter books. So these are some of the ones that I want to talk to you about. First of all is Rule Doll. He is fabulous. I told you a little bit of background about his life and how he got started in writing. But he, of course, is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, James and the Giant Peach, Matilda, the Twits. It goes the BFG. There's just a ton of them, and everyone is captivating, and kids love them. Fantastic Mr. Fox is another one, and it was a favorite of our, our kids and one that we read over and over again. Of course, you have Charlotte's Web by Edie. Evie White, and that one is a favorite of children, and Stuart Little. Now, those two books, actually my kids preferred Charlotte's Web over Stuart's, Stuart Little. Those are wonderful books, but let me talk to you about some that you may not have heard about, some that have been out of print. One of them is Half a Moon Inn by Paul Fleischman. Now, talk about white knuckle reading. When I first read this to my kids, it was not available in bookstores. It was out of print. So I went to the library and got it because I had read about it in Jim Trelease's book. And this is about a little deaf mute boy who gets caught in a blizzard, a terrible blizzard, and he ends up at Half Moon Inn. The landlady is Miss Grackle, and she's basically a witch. And she takes his shoes away from him and she boils them in the soup. Now, how he's going to get away and get back to his mother is an incredible tale. It will have you sitting on the edge of your seat. Now, when we went on vacations and we were driving, I usually brought about a dozen books, a dozen chapter books to read along the way. Because we had all boys, and if they got bored, they would, you know, try and beat each other to a pulp. So I would read to them, and one of them that I read to them, that was Half Moon In. We got to our destination, and the kid says, we're not moving until you finish this book. It was that compelling. Another one that is still out of print that my kids loved Inside My Feet, The Story of a Giant. Okay, this is a powerful book. We were also on vacation when I read this book. We also got to our destination and our kids wouldn't get out of the car. At this one, I remember we were in Yosemite. So what this book is about is about a boy and his parents have been kidnapped by an invisible giant and he has to save them. Now, what I love about all of these stories that I'm going to tell you about is of course, there's protagonists and antagonists, but it's always the person. You know, Harry Potter has help from his friends, but he doesn't have the challenges taken away from him. And children, it helps to them as they're reading about books to understand that always the hero and heroine of the story, the challenges aren't taken away from them. They have to go through it. They have to find a way to solve the problem. And that's what makes these books so powerful. Now, there's another series of books that your kids may like, and it's the Tintin series. And you're probably thinking, well, I don't want my kids reading comic books, because basically, if you look at them, that's what they are. But these books have been around for over 50 years. They've been translated into over 22 languages. You know, they come in the big kind of a, a um, comic book format. There's over 9,000 words to each one of these stories, and Tintin is a globetrotter, and he has all kinds of incredible things that are happening to him, and suspenseful, and he's literally going all over the world, and all these things are going on and happening to them. him. Boys and girls both love the Tintin series. They're harder to find. You can find anything on Amazon, thank heavens for Amazon, because they have a lot of things that you know, were out of print, and now are back in print, and some things that are really hard to find in bookstores, you can find them on Amazon. So look at the Tintin series by Hervé, H-E-R-V-E. That's another one. Definitely read the Harry Potter series. If you have problems with the Harry Potter series in any way as a parent, then think of, a, think of them as fairy tales. There are many powerful lessons that kids learn from those books and lessons that, that draw them to the books over and over again. 
Homer Price was another one um, that I loved as a child. Again, that's by Robert McCloskey. The thing that I remember most about this is Homer himself. I happen to love donuts, and there's this donut machine, and it puts out all these millions of donuts. And I remember that chapter. I, I probably read that book when I was in the second grade as well. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is a series that you're all familiar with. It's the Narnia Chronicles. Those books are very powerful. Kids like those. One word of advice, I'm sure I'm probably too late on this, but read the book to your children first before you see the movie. That way you can compare contrast and you can say to your child, okay, what things did they leave out? Why do you think they left them out? One thing about a book is that in the development of the book, you can see the, the, the hero and the heroines, the main characters, you can see the thinking process and the problem solving process that they're going through. In a movie, you can't see that. They're just jumping to things. That's just the format of a movie. It doesn't make it good or bad. It just makes it a different, a different format than a book. So with the Harry Potter series, with the Narnia Chronicles, read those books first before you actually see the movie. And by all means, watch the movie. I mean, it, it definitely makes many things come alive. But oftentimes, in their, they form different images and pictures in their minds. Then to see it on the silver screen, it is sometimes kind of a shock, and they do think to themselves, hey, they've left out this part, this part, and this part. So talk about that as parents. Another one that you may be interested in is Stone Fox by John Gardner. This is a Rocky Mountain legend. It's about a little boy named Willie who wants to save his grandfather's farm, but he has to have money to do it. And so he enters into the national uh, bobsled race that is held every year. But the person who usually wins it is this huge Indian by the name of Stone Fox. Now, if you're reading this book to your kids, make sure that everybody has Kleenexes, including your sons. Sometimes your sons are more sensitive than the girls. This is a heartbreaking um, story. It's, you know, there's a death that happens, and it's, it's heartwarming at the same time. It's one of those books that you definitely want to add to your list and that you definitely want your, to read to your kids. There's also a movie version of this as well that I would highly recommend. Make certain that you read the book before you see the movie. The Real Thief is also by William Stegg, and this one is about thievery and honesty and deception. It has more dialogue in it, and it is more sophisticated dialogue. So maybe what you want to do is you want to pre-read it as a parent, even for a second grader, and yes, read as much of the dialogue as you feel like your child can handle, but tell them a little bit about the story. With all of these books, by the time they get into the second grade, you want to end up with asking them the questions. Ask them certain questions about the book because you as a parent want to know what have they absorbed? What have they comprehended? Are they actually forming pic pictures in their mind? Because once they start forming the pictures in their mind, that will help with their reading comprehension and it will give them a memory bank to fall, fall back on. And they will never forget those stories. These are just, a, again, this is just a small sampling of some of the books that we loved as, uh, as our kids were growing up. There were many, many others, too. Let me just go through these. Oh, another series is the Soup series. These are great. These are mischievous boys in the 1930s. Uh, since we had all boys, our kids loved them. But I've also talked to parents that have all girls, and they've read the Soup series to them, and their daughters love them. So again, I have a, a very comprehensive resource library that gives you all different kinds of books, and I've categorized them by ages and stages. So go to my website, Good Parenting Brighter Children, and uh, sign up for my resource library. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow.